Okay. Um, so yeah, so today we're going to talk about um, using video textures in your web AR projects. And you know, on the surface, it might seem quite obvious what you would use video textures for. They're kind of like you know a, a, a normal texture, but you can uh, have it move and contain sound. Um, you know, what's uh, the sort of the first thing that comes to mind, at least for me, is um, having an image target come to life. Maybe like it's packaging or a poster. Um, you know, embed a trailer into a movie poster, that sort of thing. Uh, but even you know, in the markerless world, having uh, a video appear sort of floating. Um, in your space can be an interesting way of like experiencing video content. There's actually a lot more to video textures and the way they work. And you may uh, recognize some of these use cases as they go along and may not have thought immediately that that's uh, exactly what's happening here as well. So uh, with that, I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen. Okay. And uh, I hope we can, we'll be able to hear my, my computer screen, but I wanted to start off with a pretty interesting one. So this is, you know, our FaceFX custom project here in the project library. You can find that, uh, you know, this one, you can cycle through a bunch of different custom shaders. But one of the ones that we have in here as an example is uh, a face effect that does um, a video. So it's actually just looping this video of like the waves crashing on my face, which is like, it's kind of creepy, <laughs> but, um, but interesting. We have a few other kind of designs here. Um, this one, we're using like an alpha mask and then we're looping this video um, over my eyes. Um, and then here's more of like a Zorro type uh, mask going on. Um, but yeah, so face effects is like the first interesting one um, you can use this for. Uh, let's see. The next is pretty popular. So this one is portals. Um, and so basically what's happening here, I'll play a few of these while I talk. Um, uh, we'll get to that in a second. Uh, so this is you know, your sort of standard portal that, you, that you're walking inside of. And then, uh, okay. And then, you know, but inside the portal, of course, is instead of using an inverted sphere with uh, like, a, a, like a static texture applied, you're actually playing like a 360 video that's being um, you know, projected onto the inside of the sphere. And so you can do a lot of really cool things with that. You can even place like, you know, 3D content, um, a different element, like different elements located within the sphere so that you can interact with the video in different ways. Um, you know, we also did the, you know, Verizon did this with the Oscars. Um, they live streamed it. So, uh, well, this one was, you know, something that was filmed previously and then played back as an EP4. This was actually live streamed um, using HLS streaming, which we also have in our playground, an example of how to do exactly that. So um, you can uh, check out this world tracking 360 portal live stream video project um, and, uh, and then feel free to make your own live stream portals. Another example that uses the similar technique here is the Super Bowl halftime show this year. Um, where uh, it's sort of like a portal. It's more like a, like a moving tunnel. And uh, you can see kind of, you know, where if you, if you choose not to use just a, an inverted sphere, you can get pretty creative with the way that video is projected onto curved surfaces. Um, everything you see here is a video texture. that's like moving. So um, it's a pretty cool. Uh, and then next is sort of the first use case that I mentioned before, which is like, um, you know, you have some you know, static image target that you want to apply a video to. Um, and this can also be pretty interesting. So like here is a mural um, that's, uh, I think it's in Tennessee, and they painted this whole mural and it's, it's huge. And so, um, you know, you can put your phone at it and then it plays back this really cool sequence um, about the team, the Tennessee Titans. Um, sort of separately, there's like a pretty cool art exhibit that I attended that was doing, um, was using eighth wall. And uh, this is actually um, like deep learning being applied to like each frame of a video to make it appear like a painting. And the first frame of each of these videos was a real painting that the artist uh, had made. So, um, so this was really cool. And, uh, and it looks really, it's really well done. So I wanted to highlight that. Um, now, of course, this um, project that you're probably all familiar with, um, this does exactly that, right? We actually have a 3D model that's attached to one, and then on the other um, image target and within our flyer project is a video that's played back. Um, so be sure to check that out. Uh, Magic Photos is a project that's sort of a, a slightly more advanced version where we have, let me pull this up. 
So in this one, um, we're playing back, uh, it's actually closer to the way this one works, where the image target itself is the first frame of, of, of a, a complete looping video. Uh, and then we also have like an alpha fade that sort of fades in that content on top of it, kind of making it look like it comes to life. Um, and then, uh, then this, was a, this is a project called Pause Video and Lost, does what it sounds like. Uh, you know, you point your phone at it, it begins playing, you move your phone away, um, and then once the image target is lost, it pauses the video. So that's like a behavior that um, a lot of people using this would probably uh, want to use. So pause these real quick. <clears throat> um, next, we have curved image targets. So uh, you may have seen our curved image target sample project uh, where we have a video playing back on the wine bottle. Uh, this is basically the same thing as magic photos, except in this component, um, we're taking in the, uh, the geometry of the, or like really it's the curvature of the image target that you uploaded. Uh, you know, as part of the image target upload process for curved image targets, you have to apply some sort of curvature values so that we know how to track it against the, the bottle and, or whatever you're using. And, uh, and so in this case, we're actually taking that metadata that you've supplied as part of the upload process. And we're constructing um, a cylinder of geometry that's, uh, that matches that of your actual shape. And so, um, so sort of we're doing all of this magically um, you know, within the component. And then you can apply whatever you want to it, in this case, uh, a video material. Um, and then over here is a commercial example of this uh, by Tactic that uh, is for Coca-Cola and White Castle, where you could go and buy um, you know, uh, a soda. And then it's talking about, like, I think it's like the history of White Castle here for one of their anniversaries. Um, but uh, yeah, and this is actually a conical shape. So, uh, so this is like a cylindrical and this is conical. They're very similar. Um, one takes additional values to understand how conical it is, but that's a pretty cool example of how to use video materials. Um, and of course, you know, Tony had just mentioned the, the, the new TEDAV volumetric video project, but I wanted to call out that like holograms are also using video textures um, and essentially, you know, how all of these work is there is a mesh underneath that is like uh, animated. And then on top of the mesh is a material that's applied that contains a video. Um, and so, uh, so that's pretty cool knowing that like the way that you actually modify and change like the playback of the holograms is often the same way you would, um, you would code something to modify the video playback of you know, a, a quad floating in space or just a normal video on, on top of a web page. So, um, so definitely, you know, I encourage you to like go and clone these hologram projects and take a look at the readme's where we like describe, um, you know, exactly how to uh, modify the, the playback. Um, and you'll get a, a pretty good grip that uh, on all holograms because they're using the same tricks you've probably already learned from using video materials to begin with. Uh, and so, uh, and then finally, I wanted to mention a, uh, a pretty common use case we see as well, which is alpha video. Alpha video is exciting because it, it allows you to, um, you know, sort of get like most of the way there with the, with, a, uh, with the volumetric video without needing to commit to actually capturing with a stage. And so this has led to a lot of really great examples um, a lot of great commercial examples where maybe the talent wasn't easily accessible. Maybe they already had a clip of the talent against a green screen, um, or you know. And so it's it's much easier to just grab that like flat content and then you know kind of put it in your project. And um, when I say alpha video, I mean there is uh, it's either a shot against a green screen and has some kind of color that um, you can chroma key out. And then you use that color as your alpha channel. And there's a there's a project that Tony mentioned earlier um, that it's a world tracking version of the image target one that we already had on the on the project library. And you can see, um, you know, we actually referenced the the component that's used here for the, to getting the chroma key um, selection. And and I'll and I'll show you that as part of the demo, like how the alpha channels work. But, um, but yeah, as you can see here, some pretty cool um, examples here. A lot of, um, you know, a lot of these like use cases seem to center around musical performances because, uh, you know, that's, that's a really engaging way to use uh, AR just in general. And, um, you know, because it's a, 
a flat video, it's much easier to stream and people are just more familiar with the way videos work um, when you're doing like music performances. So, um, okay, so for the demo, what I want to do is kind of walk you through using um, video materials for um, both image targets and role tracking. And so the first one I wanted to showcase was this kind of um, A-frame flyer plus, I guess I'll call it. So what I've done here is, uh, I'll go back. We'll sort of start with the image target that I've uploaded. Um, let this load. OK, <clears throat> so I've uploaded an image target of my cat, Bimo, um, sort of playing with this toy where she can get like food out of it. <laughs> Uh, and I've set this to be my auto target. So of course, auto targets are the ones that load into the scene immediately. And then all we got to do is reference them by name and we can uh, begin tracking them instead of needing to make like a separate API call. Um, and so uh, one thing you might notice, I'll stop here for a moment, uh, is we actually have a brand new feature on our image target gallery page. Um, we now have sorting, filtering, uh, and search. So um, you can actually like, and sort all of your image targets in your project by however you want. You can search by different things, um, by different strings, and they'll appear. Um, and then, of course, you can also filter them by whether or not they have metadata, whether they're auto loading, and then you know what type you know you have. So that's just like a fun little thing we've added um, to make it easier to manage many, many hundreds of image targets. So there are there are. Uh, you know, there are people out there that have hundreds or maybe thousands of image targets in a project and they needed an easier way to like sort through those. Okay, so I have my image target. It's been uploaded. Um, its name is Bemo Target. Bemo is my cat's name. And, uh, and so now if I go back into the project, you can see um, I'm actually referencing my Bemo Target name inside uh, this extra extras component called extra extras named image target. Now, if we actually go into extra extras, which I encourage all of you to do, um, there's a link inside many of these readmes that will take you to this page. Um, this is where all of the extra extras components are, are stored. So um, if you ever wonder like, oh, what does extra extras attach do? Um, you can go to this link and then, you know, you can kind of search for what you're looking for and then you can read through what the code is actually doing. And, um, and not only that, but, uh, you know, I encourage you if you want to make modifications to this code, to copy and paste this component directly into your project, like I've done for this project, and uh, and then make modifications as needed. And so um, that's a really powerful thing. You know, the extra extras components are meant to be you know a really easy way to add functionality quickly to your project. But we also understand, especially for things like video, where people want to customize it, they want to go further. And of course, we like very much encourage that as well. So um, so I started with some of these like play video component. And there's a few others in here. Um, and then I brought them back into the project so I can walk you through what the components are doing. Um, but yeah, that named image target component, this is the one that we're using sort of throughout. And if you take a look at this, um, it's, it's pretty simple, but it accommodates this like check geometry thing I was talking about, where um, this is how we're constructing the, for the curved image target components, like the geometry of the cylinder or the conical shape. And then um, providing that geometry back as a mesh that you can then apply the material to. So we're sort of, that's all included in this. If you're using a flat image target, um, it doesn't need to do that. Um, so it doesn't. Separately, like if you go down here, you can see like, you know, what are we doing? Where we have event listeners on these, um, you know, engine events that are being emitted. So like uh, whether we're scanning for the image target, if we found the, if the engine has found the image target, um, every frame it has been found, it includes this extra image updated. And so each time um, one of these runs, we're actually, you know, of course, here's our, here's our functions that are being called. And so you can see inside of these pretty simple stuff. It's like on image scanning. So it's sort of like when it's loading, um, that's when we pull down all of that metadata with regards to the geometry um, to construct that, that mesh for um, the curved image targets. But then in update image target, this is whenever we're actually taking the, the, um, the position that we're getting from the engine. It's telling us where that image target is. And we're piping that through to the 3D object to make sure that every frame that that 3D object, in this case, um, it's going to be a plane, uh, is like matched to the scale rotation. And it's being, it's being shown. It's visible to the user. Um, and then 
whenever we lose image target tracking. In this case, we're going to hide it. Um, but you know, of course, you can modify this however you want. If if you whenever you lose image target tracking, you don't want to hide it. You want it to sort of like float for maybe a second and then just fade out, or you know, you want it to sort of work to positioning in front of the screen or the camera. You can do all that too. Um, but for the purposes of this, this is like a really common behavior um, that we want to reuse across projects. So that's sort of what this component is doing sort of initially. Everything inside this component is going to be, uh, is of course a child of it, right? So it inherits all of the transforms that its parent is receiving. So um, as the image target, as the extra extra's named image target sort of is tracked to the, to the space um, and it's looking for this BMO target uh, image, like, uh, you know, all of those things are being transmitted and sent upstream, um, or I guess downstream, I mean, to whatever is inside. So we don't need to worry about, you know, this autoplay video muted fade, like all of the stuff that we're including within our extra extras in the target, um, unless we have specific behaviors with regards to the state of the, the target that's being tracked, it doesn't really have to do all that much with the image targets themselves. And I kind of show you what that means. So for starters, we have this um, component I made yesterday called autoplay video muted fade, which does exactly what it sounds like. Um, it's looking for, or, or I should say, it's, it's within our target, but it's linking to a BMO video, which I have in my assets here, BMO sound in pig four. Um, and then it also includes geometry, which is a, a one by one plane. So uh, if I point my phone at this image target, you can see it starts tracking immediately. Um, and now it has like a play button. Now this is a separate image um, that I've uploaded that is basically like an, another plane that's sitting on top of the image target plane. Um, and inside my components, you can see this like autoplay, uh, let's be, Autoplay video muted fade component, what it's doing is we're applying the material for the image for the plane as the uh, video, the BMO sound that we're linking through our, uh, our parameter within the component. And so, um, so that's being attached. So we have this video that's currently paused because we want it whenever it's, um, whenever it's uh, like sort of starting off, we don't want it to play immediately. We want it to. Um, wait, sorry, I'm I'm mixing. Where where this is the autoplay video muted. This isn't right. I hadn't I hadn't saved in both. Sorry, it should be autoplaying, <laughs> but it's paused. I'm like, wait, this doesn't match what I was doing. Okay, now it's autoplaying. I was like, I'm like literally describing the opposite of what's doing. Uh, <laughs> Autoplay video muted fade. All right, there it is. So it began muted. This is where we're setting it to be muted just to make sure. Um, we're also setting it to autoplay. This is, we're setting this on the video element itself within the uh, HTML. So, um, and this is just a video tag. There's nothing like a framey or eighth wally about this. Um, if we were started applying like CSS to this instead, like we could get it to just overlay on top of our, our whole website. Um, but instead, what we're doing is we're referencing this, um, so it's, it's sort of playing in the background, and we're you know applying it as a texture to this object. And so you know whenever I pull away, I come back, it restarts the video, um, and you know again you can see in here what that's doing. Uh, so we're setting the attribute on to make it so that like when it begins, it's it's an opacity zero that allows us to fade in, and then um, you know whenever we find the target we're applying an animation property that grabs the material and then it just, it just animates that opacity in from zero to one um, over 800 milliseconds. And so um, whenever we lose the target, we're, uh, we're stopping the video and then we are um, changing the, its current time back to zero. So we're restarting it from the very beginning and then we're changing its opacity back to zero so that it always fades in every time we, we see the target. It's just snapping back into place. Um, and so, uh, so this one is very simple. It's really just handling that play when found, you know, and then reset when lost with this kind of nice subtle fading. So it's a slightly modified version of what we'll find in like Magic Photos, for instance. Um, and then if we want instead to make this uh, play sound, 
right? You'll notice that, you know, for autoplay videos, you'll always want to have them begin muted so that the browser will allow you to play them back. Um, you know, this is pretty important to remember that if you do have sound and you want, the, want it to autoplay, uh, you can do that, but it still has to autoplay muted. And uh, you would have like a separate element that allows for you to unmute the video because browsers require a user interaction before you can actually begin playing audio. And that actually makes a lot of sense if you think about it. If you, if you remember in a time before this where you went to a web page and it just starts blasting music, like back in the MySpace days, um, that was like a pretty um, irritating aspect of like surfing the web. And so it makes sense why like browsers um, you know, implemented this policy, but uh, but of course, in our case, you know, it's a, it's it can be kind of um, tedious to remember that because you know we want the people who are seeking out content to immediately have access to that. But uh, but for now, this is just you know kind of the state of things. So um, so instead of autoplay video muted, if we do want to play it with sound, um, we actually have in here um, a separate component called tap to play video with sound which again, does exactly what it sounds like. And we have a few more options here. So um, in addition to the same video that I wanna play back, uh, we also have this, it, we're calling it thumb, but it's like a thumbnail or, you know, what does this appear like when it's paused? And so in this case, it's that play video, um, like triangle icon before. And then can stop true is just something that we have in the component that allows you to uh, decide whether or not you want it to play or pause. And so, this is what that component looks like. Um, I will go ahead and save and build. So you know you can see here what we're doing is a very similar thing, right? We're, we're grabbing the material, um, we're applying the video as the source image for the material, and then now it should do what it was doing earlier, which is it's applying this as a texture. It's waiting for me to tap. So again, there hasn't been a user interaction yet, uh, but now there's about to be. So whenever I raycast against this plane. Um, that's what this set attribute can tap is all about, right? Um, if you remember from like tap to place or some of these other projects, um, we're actually sending a like a virtual laser, you know, from from our camera at the touch position to the geometry in the scene, which in this case is the plane, and then that's what's going to allow it to get the back. So we should hear my cat like chowing down on these on these kibbies. <laughs> um, and maybe some white noise as well. Um, if I tap, it's going to pause at the place um, at that point in the video, and then I can continue it. The sound definitely yeah, adds a lot more here. <laughs> um, so yeah, so what else is happening here? We have uh, this play button, as you can see, um, we're sort of positioning it and scaling it so that it appears on top of the video. And then, you know, on every time we click, so every time we, we hit that uh, that plane with the raycast, it's going to um, set. It's going to make sure that like I have that material set to video, and then um, it's going to begin playing. And then every time I pause it, it's actually going to um, you know hide. Or it's going to show my play button and then hide it when it's played. So, um, so yeah, pretty simple. Again, this is very similar to the component that's used in. Um, the A-frame flyer example, I think by default, um, that one has this kind of toggle play pause functionality. Um, but so, you know, so this is like, this covers a lot of the use cases around video, but it doesn't include alpha video, which is really popular. And so I wanted to jump into that now too. So for alpha video, I mentioned this earlier, but we're gonna need a component um, that's brought in that allows us to um, use a custom shader to basically select a color in the background we don't want rendered by the way. And um, in this case, it's going to be a green screen. This is our, our classic alpaca, or as I've renamed him, alpaca, which is like alpha alpaca. I don't know. The, the pun worked better in my head. <laughs> um, but here we have like this big green screen. And then what we're going to do is like select this color and then eliminate it as part of the rendering process. And so we're going to start with the image target version of this project. Um, and here, all that we really need to do to change this, to make it right, is swap out the video. So I'm going to take my video tag that was located up here in my A assets. I'm going to drop that in. So I'm going to replace my cat video with the alpaca video. And then next, I'm going to grab um, this sort of block, which is like 
it contains like some ways of like repositioning it so that it looks correct. Um, but then the other thing is, is we're, we're no longer using this like autoplay fade thing. And I wanted to use like a super simple component that literally does one thing. It's just called just autoplay video muted component. And all this does is it grabs the video and plays it. Um, it just, it's just autoplaying the video. That's all that's going on. So, um, so we have this and uh, let's see here. I think, yeah, I think this is ready to go. Anything else in here? Okay, so same image target. I'm not gonna try to get fancy and like have a different image target for this one. Uh, but what we will do is you'll see that whenever we do find it, um, now we have this like great alpaca hanging out with my cat. Um, and, uh, and you'll notice that none of that green screen is there because we've selected it as part of this parameter here. Um, this is like RGB, right? So nine is a whole lot of green. Um, and so was that color in the background that we want to chroma key out. So, um, and then things to remember with, with chroma key, right? Um, if you've ever worked in like broadcast or film, and you're familiar with the concept, um, there's ways that you can improve the actual end result of your web AR project if you light chroma key well. So you want to do things like have ex like very evenly diffuse lighting in your studio. Um, you want to have the backdrops be very flat, no wrinkles or curves. The idea is like you want to get as as uh, as clean of a background as possible, um, so that um, you don't need to do any work to to like try to expand that color range to remove it. Um, and so that's that's a really important one. So this is actually this is actually filmed really well, and you can tell because there's very little color bleed. Um, around the edges, there's still a little bit, but there's actually stuff you can do um, even maybe within the shader to, to improve that. So, um, so yeah, so that's pretty straightforward. We now have this alpha video um, running on an image target. However, what if we wanna do it in world space, right? So, um, so I have a separate HTML fragment that I've prepared, which is really just that project that Tony was showing up at the beginning. Um, it's all about you know, putting an alpha video on the ground. And uh, in this case, to switch to this within our project, I'm gonna go into my app.js and instead of um, adding my image targets HTML fragment, I'm gonna add my world tracking HTML fragment. And when I run this, it should just run this whole scene. Um, very similar, right? The setup is, is basically the same. We have this video tag in our e assets that we're gonna reference later as like the source within our chroma key material. Um, and then now, with this load and then boom, now they're, my, my alpaca is no longer on my screen, it's busted free. And, uh, and not only that, but I can, you know, uh, it's, it's a plane, right? So I can raycast against, I can use x rays gesture detector. Down here, you can see what I'm doing. I've got hold drag, I've got pinch to scale. Uh, I mean, the fun thing about this is now that you're no longer bound by an image target, if you rigid it around, oh, it's got another side to it now, right? So people can walk around and, and see it in its full 3D. You'll also notice another thing that's been added to this is a blob shadow. So it's kind of subtle on screen, but you can see when I move it around, um, you know, you, you have a frame of reference now of where the ground is. That's pretty helpful for things like holograms, um, but for flat videos, it's difficult sometimes because um, shadows don't work the same way. Whenever you cast a shadow, it's looking for the geometry um, to create that shadow map on the ground. And, uh, and in this case, right, we're just using kind of like a, a, a trick with the shader to just not render the, uh, the green around our image, but the geometry is still a big quad, right? So um, if we we're gonna cast a normal dynamic shadow, uh, at least with this sort of setup that I have here, it would just cast a big square on the ground. We don't want that. And so, um, but of course, shadows are still critically important. So that's why we've added this blob shadow, which is really just like I went into Photoshop and I like used a brush. And then now we have this like image. Um, and then inside here, we can see that it's a child of my entity, um, my alpaca video. And then uh, I'm like I'm like changing its position. And then here I'm like making it scale all like stretchy. So it like kind of looks right, you know, with like the shape of the alpaca. Um, and so, uh, so yeah, so we have here, um, you know, again, this like very simple, repeatable setup of like using a video, um, you know, like I said before, this is the same material that we were just using on the image target component, nothing different there. Um, and then we're using this like 
just auto play my muted video um, to get it to play back, you know, kind of instantly without any catches. But, um, but of course, like, you know, if you've taken a look at the MRCS sample project, you know, we have UI elements on the screen where you can play and pause the HCAP. Uh, you can mute or unmute. So if you do have a project that's more similar to this one and you need like playback controls, like I encourage you go to those projects, you know, steal them. There's nothing different really about the way these behave. Like I said before, you know, the holograms are also videos. They just have a mesh sort of um, as a part of that. And um, yeah, if you have any questions, feel free to ask. But yes, this is, this is video textures. Thank you so much.